Tommy V in Michigan. He was on fire this morning. Hey, thank you, Tommy V in Michigan. Th that, yes, sir. If you, if you share my prayers. Mm -hmm. my Tommy V's on. Yeah, we'll jump over there. Tommy V doing great stuff over there. Lenny Township versus Patricia C. Case number 23T00430. Paul Barnett on behalf of the Township. System Paul Defender Don Believe on behalf of Miss C. Miss C, could you please unmute and state your name, ma'am? Patricia C. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we're here for a treat pretrial and bond violation in this case. Yes, sir. My understanding is that the bond violation is simply the missed court date. Right, because we removed the testing at the hearing back in February of 2024. And she failed to appear on April 29th of 2024. All right, as to the pretrial. Um, so, in regard to the pretrial, we do have an agreement today where Ms. C will be pleading guilty in, in exchange to in exchange for being admitted to the treatment court program, which she has been accepted into. And that's a correct statement, Your So, she's pleading guilty to count one and entering into the mental health treatment program? Yes, Your Honor. I believe we may need to approach regarding some logistics regarding the treatment court program. Okay. A few moments later. All right, we're back on the record in the C matter. Um, Miss C is going to go into a breakout room with her attorney, and the court's going to be on a brief recess. Um, if there's, if anyone needs to take anything or do anything at this time, we got about four to five minutes. All right, 14B District Court is back in session. Are they back on the C matter yet? Okay. Court recall the Ypsilanti Township versus Patricia C. 23-00430. Paul Barnett on behalf of the Township. Assistant Public Defender Davi Lieb on behalf of Ms. C. Ms. C, could you state your name again? Ms. C, please state your name again, please. Patricia C. Thank you. Ms. C, it's my understanding that you're going to be pleading guilty to count one and entering into the mental health treatment program. Are there any other agreements? I'm sorry, are there any other agreements? No, you aren't, just that. Ms. C, please, is that a correct statement of the agreement? Is that what you plan to do? Yes. Please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony about the provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, ma'am. Forgive me, lower your hand. I'm going to go over some rights that you have, ma'am, that you're going to be giving up by entering into this plea. Please stop me if you have any questions or if you feel like you need to speak with your attorney again. You have the right to have a trial by a jury at which time you can call witnesses to speak for you. You can get an order signed by this court to require those witnesses come to court. You have the right to see, hear, and question any and all witnesses that are called against you. And you have the right to be a witness for yourself, or you could choose to remain silent. If you did choose to remain silent, the prosecutor could not comment on that. In addition to that, you have the right to remain silent unless, um, I'm sorry. In addition to that, you have the right to be presumed innocent unless proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Do you understand those rights? Yes. Are you going to be giving up all those rights, ma'am? You're not going to be having a trial of any sort? I'm sorry, say that again. You're going to be giving up each and every one of those rights, and you're not going to be having a trial of any sort. Okay. You understand that part? Yep. And do you understand that there's no automatic right to appeal this decision? 
So the decision you're making right now in all likelihood is going to stick with you. Yep. And do you also understand that if you are on probation, parole, or bond on uh, April the 5th of 2023 and you still are on that same probation, parole, or bond, you could be in violation of it? Were you on any of those and still are? No. All right. And um, if you're not a U.S. citizen, you could have immigration consequences. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes. To the charge of uh, domestic violence, which is a misdemeanor carrying a maximum penalty of up to 93 days and or $500 fine plus court costs, how do you plead? Oh. Guilty. Guilty. Mm -hmm. Has anyone promised you anything other than what we put on the record today to get you to plead guilty, ma'am? No. Anyone threaten you in any way, shape, or form? No. All right. On or about... On or about um, April 5th of 2023, were you at the vicinity of three? Yes. And was there a David Wallow there? Yes. And what, what is your relationship to David Wallow? He's my landlord. Did you live with him? Yes. So he's your landlord, and you guys share the same home? Right. I have the basement. He's upstairs. All right. Thank you. Did you assault or batter, Mr. Wallow? Yes. What'd you do? I just punched him in the chest. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't hardly a punch. It was more like a push. All right. I find that there's a factual basis for the pleaders and willingly and knowingly made. Are you satisfied, um, Mr. Barnett? Yes, yeah, Your Honor. Thank you. Defense is likewise satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sentencing in this matter will be on um, June 24th. 2024 at 10 o'clock a.m. June 24th at 10 a.m. Ma'am, um, I'm going to give you the phone number for the probation department. You need to write it down and call them, okay? Um, I can get, I get something to write down, but can you give me a paper and pen, sir? Okay, cool. Somebody's getting me a paper and pen. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. 734-483-7336. Okay, so now what? Call them tomorrow morning after 9 o'clock, okay? Okay. And I'll see you back here on June 24th. I'm going to write that down, June 24th. June 24th. And Ms. C, if after court, if you could head to the other end of the hallway behind you, we have a form that we need you to sign. Okay. Thank court, you. You're all set, Ms. C. Have a good day. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The court may, uh, the court will recall the case of the state of Michigan versus Brandon Hunter, 19S00241. Richard McDuffie for the people. Allison Muller here on behalf of Brandon Hunter. Mr. Hunter, please state your name again for the record. Yes, Brandon Hunter here. Thank you. All right, you have a chance to speak with your client regarding this matter. What would he like to do? I did, Your Honor, and thank you for allowing us the breakout room. I just wanted to clarify from my understanding, um, the violation I went over with Mr. Hunter is the failing to alcohol test um, filed on August 31st. No, it's a violation of probation. No. From August. That I've read three times today now. One moment. I think for one of those, he pled. It just wasn't a formal violation. So it was, I don't know if he needed to speak on that again, the one from December. Thank you, Ms. Duffy. I think that may be part of 
what our confusion was, but I certainly think he'll be admitting um, formally. But in December is not a part of the charge. Uh, are you saying that in December he pled to that charge already? Is that what you're trying to say? Ms. McDonald? Yes, uh, Your Honor, in the breakout, Mr. Um, the positive test from December 8th, he pled to on January 16th, but that was one that was never a formal violation. So I didn't know if that was just being included because it wasn't formalized yet. No. Okay. But did he plead to the August report already? There was a, a hearing held um October 5th, and that's why I think I thought he pled on in October to that violation. I see. I do have that as well, that he admitted to okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So then it is just the new report that, that he needs to plead to. Okay, thank you. He And we he will be admitting to the two uh, violations from today. All right. So you're, you're on the oath. Is it true that you were discharged from treatment in violation of the follow-on treatment recommendations? Sorry, that was our question to me, Your Honor? Yes. Yes, with that explanation that I've been incarcerating you due to, but yes, correct, Your Honor. And is it also true that you failed to report to probation for over 90 days? That is also accurate, Your Honor. That is the that is the violation that is actually the non-technical violation, meaning that that's the one that you can get up to 180 days for violating for. You understand that, sir? I do understand. I find that there's a nine one admission to the violation. Are you satisfied, Ms. McDuffie? Yes, Your Honor. Defense is satisfied as well. Now, what is it you want to say about bond? Your Honor, I would ask on Mr. Mr. Hunter's um, behalf if the court would consider a personal bond until he is sentenced with understanding that that sentencing um, be in person. He's happy to be there in person. Um, and I, I have um, a lot to say on Mr. Hunter's behalf. I'm not sure if it's um, better to do that um, at sentencing, but as far as just the bond argument, I, Mr. Hunter will be there in person. Um, and so I have no doubt that he will not show up. Um, and he has his tether on as well to ensure that. Um, and so for that reason, I would request a personal bond with um, my reserving my argument until sentencing. He's just on the screen. Oh, he's supposed to be on Scram and GPS. He's on both. I believe so, Mr. Hunter. You're on a. You have a Scram and GPS tether, correct? It was the Scram. Uh, the GPS was removed, but I'll be happy to be placed on uh, GPS um, to, um, you know, warrant that I might return. Ms. McDuffie. Your Honor, with respect to bond, um, Mr. Hunter is just in an unfortunate cycle here, um, where he. Um, violates something, ends up being incarcerated on a warrant, and then is unable to fulfill further obligations due to being incarcerated. So I hope that he can figure out how to get out of that and realize that any little thing can start this snowball effect, obviously, as he knows. I don't have any objections to him being released on the GPS and scram tether. Obviously, he needs to report immediately. Um, well, he's going to have the scram tether fitted before he's released, if he is released today. Um, that Make sure that that is um, working properly, because we are still um, obviously needing to get proper testing results for him. Sir, you know, your attorney may have no doubt that you're going to show up, but I do. I have some doubts because you haven't done it before and you have an excuse about not getting the proper documentation to us when you don't show up. I'm going to try this one more time with you. It's in your best interest to get yourself into some treatment and provide proof of that before now and your sentencing date, which is going to be in person. 
Question, Your Honor. Um, so in, with those things being in question, um, I have supplied the, the documentation. I, I'm not sure why that's not available to or accessible. Um, there has been communication between my probation officer. And Mr. Mr. Hunter? Yes, yes. I think at this point, you just need to make sure you're re -enlist, re enrolled and outpatient, okay? okay and I'll, let's talk when you release, okay? Okay, yeah, that was kind of okay. illegal to what I was getting No, to. yeah. Let's just let's talk after court and we'll make sure we have everything for sentencing that we need, okay? Very much understood. And as well, we thank you, Ms. Washington, Your Honor. The Finette is released on PR with GPS and Scram Tether. So location tracking only. To return here for in-person sentencing on June 24, 2024. At 11 a.m. You don't show, sir. We're done talking. Thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, thank you. The so, so sentence will be very clear, okay? Welcome matters of Hesa Davis. Um, they, those are going to be case numbers 23T00364 and 23W00122. Paul Barnett on behalf of the township. Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Haisha Davis on 23T364. Lisa Davis, please state your name. Lisa Davis. Thank you. Ms. Davis, I need to arraign you on a new violation that alleges that on May 16, 2024, you tested positive for alcohol via the Soberlink device in violation of the no alcohol condition of probation. You're entitled to have a hearing on this matter. It's a technical violation. You're entitled to have a hearing on this matter. It was found that you did, in fact, violate the terms of your probation. Um, you could be subjected to, uh, I believe this is the, um, or violation, so you could be subjected to up to 15 days in the water. Yeah. Is that correct, Ms. Straub? This is her third violation, if you're present. I don't think she's present, so I'm pretty sure it's a third violation. Who's representing? Um, Who's representing, Miss Davis? I am. Oh, Sandra Wright is. I'm here, Your Honor. I'm what, sorry. What do you want to do? What does your client what does your client want to do? Yeah. Your Honor, I did not get a copy of the violation, but I saw it in um JIS and I talked to Ms. Davis about it. Um Ms. Davis, have you decided what you wanted to do? Did you want to admit to the violation? Um, I'm just gonna Yeah, I'm gonna admit to it because I don't see nothing else I can do. So I'm going to admit to it and just take accountability for it. So I'm going through my steps and I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I also have seeked out for mental health because I am on medication for my depression and anxiety. So whatever I, consequences I have to face, I'm willing to do it so I can be with my kids and get this out. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you God? Yes. Thank you. Your Honor. You, uh, Ma'am, is it true you tested positive on uh, May 16, 2024 for uh, alcohol? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I find that there's a way of willing and knowing admission to the violation. Are you uh, satisfied, uh, Mr. Barnett? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Satisfied, Your Honor. Thank you. 
All right. The recommendation at this time is to get an assessment done and do a review in 45 days. So I'm not going to send you yet. I'm just going to order that you get that assessment done and bring you back for sentencing at that time. Uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Your Honor, can I speak? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, I got an assessment done at Sacred uh, Heart uh, within the seven days that you told me to. And um, I've already went to two sessions and I'm involved with uh, single sessions and group sessions. And I have um, got in touch with a mentor there that's like a sponsor. So I have done all of that already. And I, um, they were supposed to send it to my probation officer. I don't know if she's gotten it. She has not. So. I think that's a part of the problem and you got, so you, if you had that within seven days, you had on April 29th, but then you got a new positive test on May 16th, which means you have to get reassessed because a positive test means whatever they have working for you isn't working. Okay. Well, I will get reassessed. I will make my appointment today. And you need to let them know that you tested positive for alcohol despite the court's promise probably of jail to you again so and you've been in jail so you need to get some additional help now okay yes ma'am all right i'll see you back here on july 8th at 10 i'm gonna mm, i'm gonna make it 10 o'clock a.m because i have a feeling you're gonna do what you're supposed to do um to the best of your ability considering you have a a substance use disorder but we'll see where you are then okay please don't have any more positive tests or i'm gonna issue a bench warrant Yes, ma'am. I totally understand that. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too, ma'am.